Hey. Oh, <laughs> I have my screen up. Do you um, oh, there you are. I can't use the mic. Okay, these guys are having to do it from the start like I did last week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Steve said, um, yeah. Hey, you guys can hear me? No, oh, you just froze up. Yeah. Steve says, I'm sending closing instructions. Cool. Oh, you guys just froze. Uh, I wonder what happened to them. Oh, you pinged a voice. I heard a little this will be. Of a voice. Oh, there's some voice. Oh. Now I see you guys. Hello. Yeah, it's a little delayed. Do you like my background? Yeah. I can't see it. Oh, I can't see you. Question answer participants. Wendy. You guys have really bad signal. Going to the, um, we're going to drive. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Find the library. Okay. Libraries yeah, have really good signal. Stay on there. We're going. As long as we don't get backed into. Oh. Okay. So we're driving now. Okay. <laughs> and we're leaving. Oops. All right, I'll just leave that up. See? Oh, you are. Yes, you are moving. <laughs> I can hear you laugh. This is like unbelievable. Hey, you know, whatever you got to do, right? Yeah, we're having a big storm. It came through here last night. Yeah. And it, it knocked down a bunch of trees. Hmm. So the power is out. Are you trying to reach it? It's I out. wondered if that was going to happen. I actually kind of uh, uh, was a little concerned about it, but you know, I, d I figured trying to reschedule it was just going to cause a nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Well, we will be at the library in 30 seconds. Oh, okay. That's fast. Two minutes. We had thought that the gas station might have enough Wi-Fi. Um. This is Sharon's first trip out of the house in like a month. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Big I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we had some neat video of the horses using the sure foot pads that is not on this um, iPad. iPad. Oh. It's back, it's at home on the computer. Um, nicely edited. <laughs> it's yeah. There. No, been there, done that. Just means we have to do yet another webinar. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what it means, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see, the universe just wants us to keep going. 
Yeah. Yeah, I like your background. Yeah, isn't that cool? I'm getting fancier. <laughs> it's, uh... We're gonna we're gonna be around the corner and at the library in like a minute, like seconds. So no worries. I'm just checking to see if anybody needs help signing in. Is the library open? No, I think everyone else is, everyone to. else is sitting here too. Yeah. Yeah, no, but there's a lot of there's a lot of vehicles parked outside the library. Okay, it should be able to handle it. Because there's Probably nobody for inside. the same reason. We just park right in there with the thingy is. Oh no, we can't. It's handicapped. I broadcast from the library for something with Cali last week down in South, two weeks ago in South Carolina. So I know libraries are a good source. That's good. Yeah. All right. That would be pretty good. Okay. Where How's this? Sandwich in hand. How is this? Oh, yeah. much better. You're at least not like delayed. Yeah. That's slow, awesome. but not delayed. <laughs> okay. I just need to actually hook up to the Wi Fi. Yeah. Okay. And you, your words seem to be pretty, pretty. Um... So we're just now off of the. Uh... We're just doing a hookup. Here. We're at full service right now on the cell phone. So. Oh, got it. Got it. Yep. The tower. So let me know. I'm going to switch on to Wi-Fi in a second. So let me know if it um, gets better. Okay. Do, 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 do. Cable Wi-Fi. Free public. Yeah, probably. Yeah. La, na, 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 na. Ah, again. Okay, it looks like we're hooked up to the Wi-Fi. Okay. Is it better or worse? Oh yeah, no, I, that's awesome. Is that good? That's yeah. Really awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me turn the truck off. Yeah. I was hoping. Okay. Here we go. Whoops, things are falling. So do you want me to put up some video and you talk about what the video is then? Yeah, well, do you want to, for people who maybe didn't, weren't here last week, so we should do introductions. Hi, I'm oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. we'll I'm see. Just to Laura, we'll out. see. <laughs> you don't have any video. I, oh yeah, okay. I don't, yeah, because we, we got this great footage for this week. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's on the other computer. It's at home. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I just, I have random video. So we'll just look at sure. random video. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I can talk about it though, because I got to tell you, Dakota, my uh, blind Appaloosa, yeah. she, she did really interesting things with the pods. I don't have a lot of selections of pods. We need to get you pads, but I didn't have any. They're coming in today. Yeah. <laughs> We have one that I think you've referred to it as the trauma pad. It's a really, it's a wide and it's denser. It's kind of, um, a rectangle with two different yeah. Yep. Yep. And she really used that a lot on her front so that's feet. that's the physio, physio pad. Mm. And then she had the two orange pads, the normal size pads. Yep, hard. And the wedges. And the wedges. Yellow topped wedges okay. and her back feet. Yep. Oh, awesome. She, we can talk about all of that. That's yeah. really cool. And then since the then, she, <laughs> yes, since Lunch. then she has been doing extended trots all by herself out in her pasture. Huge flying, huge, huge extended trots. But she's blind, 
So she's usually like feeling for things and she's just gained a tremendous amount of confidence. And like, I think be because she uses the one good eye, so it's like this, you know? Yep. So she's offsetting her balance and her structure a little bit by doing this a lot. Sure. And she's just moving straight. And it was really astounding. And Mummy Horse, who's had lots of various, she's had major stifle issues and she didn't want to get off the pads. She would have stayed there for hours. She was probably on there for like at least maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, she was just, it was amazing. And, and she, when she walked off the pads, she was drunk. She could hardly walk in a straight line. Yeah, and that's not unusual. That kind of, I call it the drunken spider. Yeah. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. like, um, they literally are kind of like wandering all around. Yeah. I'll have to keep my hands back here so they're not looking really big out there. Like, I'm flying! Woo! Do you have a green screen? No, it's a virtual background on Zoom, and yeah. I just, I, I, there are some other pictures I wanted, but this one came up, so, um, and yeah, my background's exactly the background it's been, but this way it makes it look like a different video, and cool. All right, we're going to go. You ready? Yes. Okay. I'm not, I'm down with my lunch. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> we were, you know what it is, we were like, the power just went out. Oh wait, you gotta hold that. Well, people, because people are coming in. Um, uh, tell us where you are signing. Let me have some of that drink. Let's turn this a little. Thanks. Janet's already raised her hand. Janet, what are you raising your hand about? <laughs> Let's see, Two people have raised Marblehead. Okay. Nevada. Let's see. I'm gonna lower everybody's hands to start with. And it's it's easier if you put Here's stuff in the chat. Uh as opposed Edmonton, to Edmonton, Austin, Texas, Minnesota. 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 What's the map? Illinois. We're going all over the map. Yeah. Alberta, South yep. Carolina, Vermont. Oh, hey, Nikki. Hey, Nikki. It's really fun. Long Island. Yeah. It's happening so fast. I know. It's like awesome. You guys are awesome, all of you. Yep. Thank we, you for coming out today. Yep. Every day is an adventure. Uh, Sharon's going to tell us about her adventure once everybody oh, gets a to roll in. North yeah. Carolina, Oklahoma. Heidi. Where the wind blows. You guys, did you get all those bad storms? Oh, yeah. North Carolina, I hope you're okay no. down there. Oh, I know no. the tornadoes. Oh, came. they got bad storms too. Yeah. Let's see. Is Amber okay? UK. Lucy. She's in Ohio. Maine. Maine. Uh, oh, yeah, you like my new background screen? Is yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> I She's figured I had the universe. My, my game here a little bit on Zoom. So Alberta, Connecticut. Background. Aaron, Ottawa. I could change it for every meeting. Netherlands. Oh, Woo! Netherlands. Netherlands. Tornado too close to Aiken. Ooh, I hope you're okay. Uh, Mass crazy wings. Yeah, yeah we we, uh, we're through. broadcasting from our truck because we don't yes. have any power at home. Um, the storm came through Virginia last night. I slept through it. Brad said it was really bad. Oh, Virginia, yay. Virginia's for lovers. Horse lovers. Kentucky. Um, so let's see. We're still rolling up on the participants, so we'll give it another minute. Germany. Give people a chance. No power. Yeah. Oh, generator, good job. Yay. New That's York our next City. Assessment. I hope you guys are doing okay there in New York City. I'm from Stanford, yeah, right? Connecticut, which so New York was uh in, in Norway. Sweet. Look the island. All right. <laughs> Minnesota. This is really fun. It is fun. Fun. Thank you all for coming out today. Yep. Yeah. Arizona. More Arizona. We need to move there. Okay. I like, I like Arizona. <laughs> I don't know that you got good for sharing. It, it would be really good for me. It's Windsor. Yeah. Um, All right. So, because there are so many people on this webinar, um, please put your questions in the chat, not in the Q and A, because it's hard for me to manage both, and I pretty much watch the chat line. Um, I will do my best to kind of keep up with the questions because I think those guys are stuck in a car, and it's probably not as easy for them. I could actually, I'm going to try to log on to my phone too. I'll see if that works and I can maybe help you out a little bit. Oh, that'd be great. Uh, yeah. Good thing for technology, folks. This is, yeah. uh, 
mobile office. Yep, it absolutely is. A, it's uh, thank God that Wendy broadcasted from her truck last. <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, there's precedence. I, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I th I hope this is not every time one of us has to be in our vehicle. I know. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> it's like when we first started to do webinars last year, the first webinar, we had a snowstorm. Our power went out. We had to go visit with Heidi yep. and uh, yeah. What is it? So I was doing a Surefoot webinar um, at Callie's Place, CRK Training in Pennsylvania. And just before I started, I had a, like a two-year-old who was like 17 hands. And there was a lightning strike on the pole Miami. right outside the building and knocked out all the power below us. But we had power, so we got the webinar done. And I had a really anxious horse to work with. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> all right. So I think it's slowing down a little bit. So welcome, everyone. I'm so glad to have you here. Um, I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is the webinar with uh, part two. Well, we're going to do intros again um, with Sharon Wilsey and Laura Wilsey, and I'm so glad they're back here as my guests. Um, so, Sharon, I'm going to switch it over to you and let you do a little intro there. How's that sound? Okay, I wasn't ready. She's <laughs> zoned <laughs> out. Fall right on you. <laughs> it's, the, it's the Wendy show. Okay. So, well, you got to introduce I, yourself, right? I, <laughs> I've been um, writing my third book all morning and, and just realized about 20 minutes ago that I had to stop so I could switch gears. So, uh, so hi, I'm Sharon Wilsey, and uh, I have this system that's called Horse Speak, and it's based on how horses uh, use their body language to communicate with each other, and not in sort of the big broad strokes, like there's an idea that body language exists with horses in the world. That's not a new idea. But I took the time to study how horses use micro gestures and then how they string all those micro gestures together from nose to tail. And there's systems to that that they use that are really logical and easy to learn. Once you start seeing them, you can't not see it. So even just learning a little bit, people have come back and said, oh, oh my God, like now I see this, now I see that. I have one um, woman who has been studying with me for a little while and she has a lot of horses and she's like, I can't go outside anymore because they're all talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to think I was just taking a walk, looking at the horse, but no, they're talking. <laughs> so so and it's really fun. And as far as working with um, the sure foot pads with Wendy, it's been very interesting to see what the horses say about the surefoot pads because Wendy is a uh, doing the research into you know these pads and how they work and what they're doing and providing which is I know you're still actively involved I think right with that yeah. so so that, let me give a little intro about surefoot sure so in 2012 I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner and if you're not familiar with the Feldenkrais method um, it's really about having choices and possibilities um, you can't do what you want until you know what you do it's like with horse speak, you can't understand what the horse is saying until you, you know how to read it. Um, and mm -hmm. so, um, because as a Feldenkrais practitioner, we're always looking at options and ways, different opportunities and possibilities. Um, in 2012, in May, I stuck a foam pad underneath the horse's foot and watched it change in 15 seconds. Um, it was just a little experiment with a horse that was lame and I was gonna see it again. And Dr. Harmon, whom I've had on recently on a Zoom meeting, um, she suggested that I uh, try it after looking at what they were doing with dogs and uh, blew my mind and changed my life in 15 seconds. So um, last year, Sharon, was it last year? Yeah. 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 It feels like yeah. 10 years ago. <laughs> um, last year, <laughs> Yesterday. Sharon and Laura were at um, Equitana in Essen, Germany. And I had heard about Sharon, people had told me about her, and she happened to be like, diagonal to my booth. And so I was going to be doing some demos and I grabbed her and drug her into the arena as she describes it. <laughs> I did find a bunch of those photos too. And not uh, at, next, home. at home. Okay. Have to do number three. Uh, next time. Um, and so Sharon was standing next to my uh, translator who was uh, speaking in German and I was just working with the horses. Um, but it turns out that I was reading the horses unconsciously and Sharon could put words to what I was reading, which was so exciting because people always ask me, well, how do you know? And I'm like, I don't know, I just do. Um, but what Sharon's done is been able to put that into a, la a learnable language for everybody so that we can understand what the horses are saying. So I'm going to throw it back over to Sharon now. Yeah. So 
what's what's been really fun about teaming up is that be, because of your background in Feldenkrais, which is a, a, a very high level of awareness of very small things and small changes. Um, that's just one way to describe the sort of the approach or the effect of it. Um, the horse because it does the same thing. So we're we're coming from two platforms, two different things that we're working on, but we actually have a similar eye. So it's yeah. been really fun to to spend time. Where did when did you go to spend time in? <laughs> I can't sure. see one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, uh, working together and and really just sort of coalescing this. So so last week after we had our meeting, which was really fun. Um, we grabbed a couple of Surefoot pads from our friend Deb, and um, I was able to bring it out to all five of my horses and try it out for everybody. Rocky had been on some uh, before when he was in colic after colic surgery, so originally it was like, "Oh, we're going to do Rocky," but all the horses saw. Yep. And and in fact, when we got the the mummy horse, our our Morgan, who's had a couple of babies, and her daughter lives with us on the property, mummy's on these pads and she's swaying and she's rocking and she's having all these transcendental experiences. And there's Luna in the background just pacing Amazing. back and forth. I want those pads. And when she finally gets to stand on him, she stood on like one pad. It was like this is boring. And <laughs> something else. What was the big deal? Yeah. But all the other horses really got into it and really utilized it. And it was just wonderful to see them say something like, hey, I want to try, I want to try it differently on this foot, or I'm going to try it like this. And, and you know, what's neat, Wendy, is when they step on it and just the ankle, yeah. you know, and there's like, it was so neat to see them create an angle because we had two um, angled pads. Right. So maybe I should give people a, a few pictures of what the pads look like and yeah. what this is all about to, before we get into some of the stories. Um, so I'm going to, let's see, pull up your power's back on. Power's back on at our house. Oh, yay! yay. <laughs> now that you're here. <laughs> now that, yes. <laughs> we will lose you for sure. We are in Vermont. With all right, so I'm going to be on the screen here. And I'm just going to um, pick this video here. This is a, uh, just because it's easy to find. So mm -hmm. uh, let me make that bigger. This was a little quarter horse who had been a reigning horse that came to me for a lesson. And the woman came for a riding lesson, but she was also interested in Surefoot. And she had never used it before with this horse. So that's why I'm picking this yep. horse. Thank you. My I'm hand just going to drop my sand down, hand down. So the, I'm just giving her some instruction here. and and. I just want you to, well, actually this way to, I'm going to stop this because this is after I already started working. So I'm hopefully not going to make you sick moving too fast. Uh, here we go. I can slide pictures really fast and I don't want to make anybody nauseous. Um, but I have found the pause share button now. So this is how the horse was moving in the beginning. And you can see that the canner is really quite hard for her to get into. It's very on the forehand. Um, the horse is really low in front. Right, and you can see that the rider is way off to one side. So we started with this horse, and what you do is you start typically harder and work softer, and the pads are 10 by 12 by two, and I, I go through a process of making sure the horse is okay with the pads. So I've got videos that show you how to introduce your horse to Surefoot. I've been loading up those on my um, Facebook page, Surefoot Equine, so I'm not gonna go through those videos right now. Um, because there's other places where you could find them. But this is just offering a pad to the horse and allowing her to stand on it. They get to choose how long, which foot, which density, um, within reason. Like if a horse for the first time is standing on a pad and stands on it for 20 minutes, that's bad because you, you're working little tiny micro muscles and you don't want to exhaust them. But right. Anyway, yeah, so I'll just play this again, Sharon, if you want to just say anything that you notice in this video. Well, you know, so what's interesting is horses go into something that I call processing and, and it's just like us processing information and it's sort of an inward body scan. And right there when he licked and chewed, he'd completed the thought about the processing. So what we often see a lick and chew and we, you know, sort of there's a, a street corner idea that um, <clears throat> licking and chewing means they're agreeing with you or they're getting it. But, but licking and chewing is actually a, a, a shift from one state of awareness to another state of awareness. So 
they're, they hold still when they're thinking, just like we do. If we're really thinking, we might even hold our breath. You know, we might be like, what was that thing? And we get like, we look up and away and we don't, and we get and really still like, and we go, oh, that, and we take a breath. And, we, and then you may even smack your lips. You might even go, that, yes. give me that, yeah. that sound, you know, yeah. that we try not to do too much when we're <laughs> public speaking. Public speaking. <laughs> um, but so that she was a really quiet mayor in that she really took to the pads very quickly, which is kind of the middle of the bell curve. So I went from one pad to two. So you gradually add uh, pads. It is not necessary to get to four pads. Um, it is really about listening to the horse and doing whatever. Um, yes, dopamine is released with licking and chewing. That is correct. But the question is kind of where did the dopamine lick and chew come from? In this case, right. from relaxation that we're offering something comforting to the horse and you see them process and then that lick and chew is a dopamine release. Um, some people want to push the horses and then let them come back down for dopamine. But my experience with Surefoot over eight years is that most horses are already too pushed and that they need to, uh, we need to bring them down, that they're already stressed and possibly in a state of, of freeze. So I've got the highest speed video um, internet connection you can have if it's not playing well because somebody said the video is moving slowly. Um, it may be that your speed is kind of slow and this will be put up on YouTube afterwards. So you can always go back and look at the, the video clips because they are being recorded. Um, so, right. Um, so what I want to say to like, there's a couple of, I can't read them all because I'm not seeing the whole box, but right. um, there's, there's a lot of see if we have really a good thought that's gone into what are horses doing? How are they processing information? Um, <clears throat> what does this mean? And, and I love Dr. Peter's work because he's talking about, well, let's look at the brain. You know, it's just, let's just really take a really good look at what the brain is doing. And Wendy and I spent a, a whole three days, three day extravaganza with him and, and we had a great time together. Um, so I have all a whole, things um, YouTube video up on my uh, Murdoch Method channel with Steven and I've got part two coming. So oh, you can go and watch that and learn Brain 101. Yeah, yep. and it's fantastic stuff. So what I bring to this um, equation is having taken the time to understand what horses mean to themselves or to other horses. So what is the self-talk that they're doing? So that everything that a horse does with their body language is contextualized into their realm of communicating with each other or to themselves. Where we have, we, we use both. Uh, Nonverbal cues, like I'm Italian, so I don't know if you can see me, but here goes my hands. Oh, here, and wait, I'll spotlight you. Hang on. <laughs> hey, do you, Wendy, do you have any other videos? Um, I have tons of videos that are side view, so then we could see more of the whole body. Uh, sh yeah, let me let me find some. I'll just yeah. yeah. Um, so where what I was saying is that um, we can toggle back and forth between using some body language and how I open my eyes or how I how I change my base posture is going to have an effect on the emphasis of the words that I'm saying. So we, we focus primarily on uh, the verbal speech or if we're reading the, the written speech, but 80% of our unconscious reading of language is body language. And I know that because I worked with students who were on the um, autism spectrum for a number of years, about eight years, and working with them to understand horse body language had to be very methodical, and and precise and slow and so by being able to help them build a, a good repertoire of body language with horses they were able to then superimpose some of those cues onto human body language because in a in the realm with uh humans you have to deal with both what they're saying and what they're non-verbally saying whereas the students i was working with if, if an animal walked in the room a horse dog cat anything generally they had a better perspective oh the cat's saying this or saying that because there's only one thing to listen to which was only the body language so from that perspective horses only have one way to communicate and that's their body language you know, but they're communicating a full range of information i mean they're probably not talking about shakespeare but yeah. <laughs> they're probably talking about geez there's some really good apples down the way you might want to go check that out but it's still what they're talking about, it's still what they're communicating. So from my perspective, when a horse is using their lips, using their tongue, opening their jaw, there's a number of different things that they could be communicating with that gesture. 
So there's signals, there's gestures, and there's baseline postures. In addition, there's breath messages. I've got a sign video here, Sharon. So let's just yeah. start looking at this and then you can, I, and I, it's random. I just like, wait right. two minutes. So gives you some time. Um, this you, was a imported. Did you share it? Yeah, I, I can't. See. Oh, I can't see it yet. Hang on. Okay, I'll get it up. Share. You see it now? No. no. Something has happened to our view. Uh, let me see if I got share. I'll pause that. We see double Wendy. Yeah. Oh, you see double Wendy? That's bad. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> let me stop share. There Everyone else can oh, see there's, it. There's, there's us. us. That's good. Okay. okay so Valerie. now I'm gonna, you shouldn't be spotlighted. Now you should be okay. able to now share it. I think it will work. The screen. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. No problem. So this is a warm blood. He was a jumper imported um, with a really tiny woman, way too much horse for her. He arrived at this clinic and um, just uh, was dangerous, actually, not because he was a dangerous horse, but he had so much energy. And so we worked with him in the, in the, square, in the little covered arena here and mm. um, just an entirely different horse using the pads. Um, yeah. So when I'm looking at, when I see a, this horse, and I don't have any of that, you know, you just gave me some background of your experience with him. So the, I'm looking at his um, moving the information from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail. So right there, you saw the tail flick, and then he lowered his head. So there's an interesting thing that you'll see when you start to catch on to when, what horses look like when they're processing. And that is that uh, I, there's the 13 buttons which go through the horse's body, which are signal points for them to communicate with to each other, but also to themselves. And when they're taking in new information and comparing it to old information, it has to pass through the body from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. And as you see there, he just took a big breath with his nose and there he, he goes moving because he's made a decision. Yeah, he's so being, Yeah, so being able to watch them take information in, move it through, get stuck in a spot, like he's stuck in the base of his neck frequently. And when he dropped his neck is when he was starting to take in new information. Then he whinnied because often when horses are ready to go deeper, they get a little bit nervous. Like you're ready to jump into the pool and you go up to the edge and you look at it and you go, ah, it's gonna be cold and then you back up. So this is a common thing for them too. When they're ready to go a little bit deeper, they will go into what I call like a, a sentry state where they're like, is it safer for me to go deeper right now with people? Let me call to my buddies and see where they are. And so that would, to me is a sign the horse is ready to do um, another level of processing. So I don't know what you did next with him. Um, so, you know, I, this is not his first day. He was there for three days and I started with the pads when she brought him down to the arena. Um, but then I think this was day two, I decided to just use him as a little demo horse for Surefoot. And you can see there, we moved him onto four pads but we worked with him loose so that he could make all the choices that he wanted. Yeah. He actually has some slow-mo in it. Um, and so that people, hopefully that's, it'll get a little clearer here. Looks like I was out of focus. Okay. Mm. Well, you can see the difference from the first video to this one, the base of his neck has shifted significantly. Yeah. And so as on a communication level, that's a, a stronger signal like there, how he's holding the base of his neck and, the, and his shoulder blades is different than how he is in the next set of pictures. And even how his uh, lower abdomen is in this next set of pictures, it's a little bit looser and he's breathing a little deeper. So it, for, and as far as a horse going through their self-talk, he's gonna have to compare notes to how he already feels, what he already knows about um, experiences he's had. I don't know what they can remember and what they can think of and how do they, nobody knows that. We can't know that for sure. But you can watch them doing it. And if you see them doing it enough, it, it really is just plain as day. It's very clear. So you can see them get stuck in a button, which we often call bracing, you know, or rigidity. And it is on a physical level, it is that, but on a mental, emotional level, there's also something that they're having a hard time 
understanding, coping with, dealing with. It could be from the past. It could be from the present. I don't know, but that's, it's predictable and you can see it. And when they start to, what I love about the pads is the pad like gives them an opportunity to renegotiate a lot of how they've been processing information and sort of rediscover themselves, which is the beauty of Feldenkrais also. That also has a similar effect where you get to renegotiate these micro gestures in your own body. And so then when he walks off, I like to see him um, really using his neck more. I'm watching, he's checking out the environment. He's checking the other pads, which you'll see, Wendy, yeah. right? You see them do often, that all the time. Very often. And they actually recognize that the pads brought him comfort. So in further mm -hmm. sessions, horses will seek out the pads or let down as soon as they see a pad. I mean, it has a very uh, Pavlovian response once they know what, you know, they've experienced them. Yeah. So and I think, I wonder if there's a, you know how they have the, um, there's a reset button GB between 26. the nostrils and in, in uh, acupuncture is called GB26. But what with my horses, which is the video we can't show right now, yeah. when they sniff, a couple of them sniffed the pads, they had a total, ooh, response to it. It's like just the touching yeah. on that button. They had this like wowzer response. So I'm really curious. I would love to have you know, a brain scan on a horse when they're doing oh, this stuff. Would be my favorite thing. So this horse here, I mean, what's what you can't appreciate is that he's actually standing quietly and standing because he's mm -hmm. so high energy and was trying to figure out who's my friend, where am I, you know, what's going on. And so if anybody did anything, he was very busy. Oh, mm -hmm. this, um, so here he is moving around now afterward. He's gonna sniff the poo. Sniffing poo is significant. What does it horses, signify? Well, when horses are trying to create safety for themselves, they'll often make a poo in a place that they feel safe. And they'll also go and sniff other horses' poos because you can they can pick up on the pheromones that were in that that poo when they when the other horse made it. So if the horse was in a deep state of relaxation, that's different chemicals. And they're so, they're, their noses are working on the level of a dog's nose. So they're smelling things we can't possibly imagine. But so what I've noticed oops, go ahead. is that, go ahead. Well, in terms of movement, you can see here how he's walking and he's got his neck down. And then mm -hmm. I just realized that here, he'll go into a, the old pattern. Here's the old pattern. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so the horses will go back and forth from the old place to the new place very often when you're working with them, either uh, unmounted or under saddle. But yeah. then, this idea was very new, this nice, long, lengthening neck, mm -hmm. right? And you can see he's still a bit stuck in the pelvis. Yeah. But then here is much more the old pattern, the shortening of the, 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 the back, contracting the back, lifting the head and neck, and of course, shortening his stride in front when he does that. Right. So from the horse speak perspective, those are all the physical attributes that you can see. And, you know, if people who have spent time like yourself studying anatomy and the best way for horses to be using themselves, the physical is really important because that's what our eyes can see. We can learn to see that. The, the soft skill is then un interpreting what does the horse mean by that posture? So when a horse is in a higher posture, I call it, I just call it going to X or going to O. It makes it really simple. So X is an upright posture and O is a down low posture. So he's going into his O, which means he's also starting to find inner quiet. So here he is under saddle now with the owner. Um, and that, that there, that O posture, putting his neck down was huge for this horse. Yeah. Yeah. You can see, and you'll see the changes throughout his whole physique. Like he's starting to look like a different horse. Yeah. And I mean, this horse, when he came into the arena the first time, he was ready to go do a jump around. I mean, he yeah. was that up and that fit and looking for, this is another horse, looking well, for- Well, and you know what, if, if you go back to that horse for a second, because look at the chin and the lips here, look at how much wiggling is happening and how much releasing is going on through the chin. And, the and, tail. and those movements there is all about, he's rotating his head on the- Yeah. Here, on the atlas. So he's, he's really rotating his head and moving his tail at the same time. So he's sending signals back and forth in his own body, which are partly 
he's renegotiating how he could move, but, he, but when they renegotiate how they can move, they're also renegotiating how they feel about moving. Because those two things go together for them. You can't separate them. Yeah, and it, it was a huge change. Like the fact that she could actually be sitting still on the horse in the arena. And I, I mean, it, when the first time she came, now you can see it's a, it's a rather rustic environment and not set up for a horse of this uh, power level, if you will. Yeah. But we were able to get him to come down so that he was, um, suddenly you didn't notice him in the crowd is the way I think about it. And so, yeah. you know, all of my attention having to go to this rider to keep them safe, suddenly yeah. he was one of the gang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he, when they find their old posture, they're going to a deeper level of relaxation and homeostasis. So this horse here has, you can see this arthritic bump on the knee. And the thing is with Surefoot, you can use this with any horse. Um, and while we're not gonna solve the bump on the knee, what we can do is bring this horse comfort. Right. And you can just see yeah. the really deep eye blinks, the liquid. Yeah, yep. exactly. Pad. I'll just play yep. that again. And I actually, let's see if I can slow it down. It's a little bit of a tail lift too. It's also interesting that a lot of his lip wiggling is going towards the right. The right knee is the one with the bump on it. Yep. And if you look at his lip, it's constantly tilting that way. Oh, you're right there, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so did you see that? He just flinched all up through his pectoral muscles. You see oh, that? Oh, yeah, switched. well, that's see it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I missed that before, but yeah. Yeah, look at that. It's really moving. So when they start to feel on an emotional level, the pectoral muscles is where they feel pride. You know, when horses are displaying for each other, they puff up their chest, right? Yeah. So they can get a strong pec muscle um, setting from, from, you know, good riding that helps them collect. But the way they use the pec muscles for themselves, for their communication, also is like, I'm feeling good. I'm yeah, feeling better. There it better. is again, actually, yeah. really strongly. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like, you know, stuff going on. Too. There's stuff going on that- Well, that's really white visible. clover drool, okay? We, yeah. have, okay? we have the white clover fungus drool. But there he is, that whole right front. Yeah, see it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The tail's lifting again, too. So I'm sure that there's nerves that are, you know, coming into alignment and there's micro um, muscular adjustments and things. So there but on a- on a about the therapy backup. Therapy what did that backup. question, what did Colleen just ask? I oh, saw it uh, pop up. Uh, well, we got four new messages. Let's see. Uh, yeah. I have an appointment. Somebody's going to catch us later. They, uh, blah, blah, blah. How long do these changes last? They can be permanent. I've yeah. seen as little as one session. Now, obviously, this horse with this knee, we're not going to change that arthritis knee, but we are right. going to force comfort, and it can totally change their, their movement in just one session. So here he is. You can see he's on the right front. And there's all that contraction again, and he goes to step off and then puts himself back down on it. Yeah. And look at them, yeah. how, how much tail action there is. And then look and at how he loads right down onto that leg right there. So the, all that tail action, in, in, when horses are self-talking, they store emotional information in the pelvis. So the tail is a demonstration of what they're feeling, right? The tail goes up, the tail goes down, the tail swishes, it, it does all kinds of things. And so the tail is their way of saying, and this is how I feel about it. So it's like taking in information through the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, you know, taking the information in, sort of channeling and processing the information through the various body parts, and then having a feeling about it in the end. So when it's gone all the way through and there's a tail swish, that's typically where you see a horse having a full, a full aha moment. They're like, aha, and this, aha, and that. And they're having a thought about it, a feeling about it, a renegotiation of it, and allow of their body to change. So I think horses, because they do crave homeostasis, they crave to come back to balance in all ways, physical, mental, and emotional. Anything that allows them to do that, and then we're sitting there patiently with them, the rider is sitting there calmly, you're there calmly, everyone's saying, hey, we're here for you. So why wouldn't he have the agency to then say, okay, well, if you're all going to be here for me, I'm, I'm just going to renegotiate all my stuff. This is great. So I think that's why sometimes the change can be so lasting as well. And what about um, the use of therapy backup that we found some kinds of really beneficial things as well 
through the horses talking through rounding their neck and their pelvis to talk to all their buttons to bring forth a release as well. Mm -hmm. Someone has so, so somebody that. asked, okay, somebody's asked about the salivation. In, in Virginia, we have white clover and it gets a fungus. And so what happens is we call it white clover drool and it's a result of the fungus on the clover, which we can't do anything about. So in the summertime around here, the horses drool buckets of saliva um, and that's what's happening with this horse. Um, right. Somebody else asked about uh, warming up. The pads are the warm up. In fact, we have barns that no longer lunge the horses before they ride them. All they do is put them on surefoot pads because the surefoot pads are the warm up. So that's what you have to realize is we're getting that body organized in a whole different way. And right. you don't need to work them or ride nothing before you put them on pads. Yeah. We'll just look at this video again. And there may be some flies here because it is summertime. Um, mm -hmm. but it is interesting that all the shivering is on that right well there's a little left front yep but you can see how and that was probably flies he stepped off and put himself right back on the pad and then we got a lot of licking and chewing right someone's asking how frequently do you recommend so i suppose um, using it i can see the whole pads um you know as often as your horse would like them some people use them every day some people use them a couple times a week some horses want to see them less frequently some horses want to see the right front pad every day for a year um, in training barns they tend to use them no more than every other day because they start to become sort of normal i mean not normal but so, so familiar like if you're doing something every day you kind of don't get the same bang for the buck right right less frequently so um, somebody's asking how to know which pad to use. Please go to my Facebook page, um, Surefoot Equine. I've put up all the videos about which pad to choose, how long, which density. They're also on my YouTube channel, Surefoot Equine. Um, and I'll answer all those questions in those videos because we don't want to take the time to answer it here where we've got the advantage of sharing. Uh, I understand. I start with the good leg because the, um, think about if you have an injury and I run right up to grab your injury, you're going to get defensive. But if I go to the other right. side and say, hey, this feels great. And you're like, oh, yeah, that really does. Then when I go to the injured side, you're going to be more willing to let me um, um, come in and talk to you there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then he did move off of the, the bad leg. Oh, and kept the good leg working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what mm -hmm. I did was I progressed from the hard pad and now we went hard, firm, not sure if I went to medium, but now we're on soft, right? So yep. for those arthritic horses, I start hard mm -hmm. first, but if, if they're, depending on how receptive they are, like I've had some that it was the next day I went to softer, you don't want to go too soft too fast. Because a lot of instability. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see that he's, totally grooving on this and now he's swaying. So somebody asked about, uh, what was that again? <laughs> holding the, get excited <laughs> two and hold, at the same time. The, um, <laughs> hold the tail tight. Yeah. And then someone else asked about touching the knee. So when horses touch their knee and below, it tends to mean that they're having an understanding about something. So it's more direct. It's like, oh, I get it. Like we do this. I don't know if anyone can see me. Yeah, yeah. You. you see me. Okay. So we'll be like, oh, you know, we might make this gesture. We, we have hands. So in order for them to do a same gesture, they have to go down and touch that spot. Um, so generally when they do that knee touch thing, they're going, oh, and so it's about them. So I don't know what he's saying, oh, about, but whatever it is, it's significant to, to this horse. Um, the other thing about tail clamping is if they're clamping the tail, then it's just like us you know, getting all pucker butt about something and, you know, tense and worried. And when a dog clamps the tail, when a, you know, when we get nervous, there's a, there's a clamping that our bodies go into as a protective measure. So um, when horses clamp the tail, they're generally just saying like, I don't feel good about this. I feel really defensive. I'm not, nothing about this is, uh, oh, I'm really off screen. <laughs> nothing <laughs> about this is, is working for me. So <laughs> We are so, in a vehicle. Yeah, and this thing. So, <laughs> what's interesting is, is you know, like in the terms of craniosacral work, right? So, so back goes to front and front goes to back. So, they they influence each other. They take in information through the face. So, if if we're taking in, if we're, and Wendy tells me something and I go, I don't even know what to think about that. I can't. My neck has gone stiff. My breath has become held. I've tightened up. I've gone into an X posture. I've curved my back. I've tucked my butt. 
My whole body's gone into a defensive surprise posture. And if I live that way, if I'm like this for a long time, I may start to develop, you know, other things, other issues. So when we go into an O posture, that's why people like to meditate or, you know, people like to take a hot bath because it, it releases your posture so you can drop down. So your, your physical body has a <clears throat> strong influence on how you think and how you feel. And for horses, those influences are right next to each other because they don't have the option to talk about it. They can't describe a hundred ways to say beautiful, right? They just, they have a direct experience of it and it looks like this, you know? <laughs> so they, you know, if they're clamping the tail, that's their experience in that moment. So if, if the butt is tense, if the pelvis is tense or it's tight or it's stiff or it's rigid, then there's also, there can be physical stuff going on, but there's also going to be something that they're having a hard time dealing with. And it could be old. It could be something from before the person bought the horse. It could be because that horse is super sensitive and everything bothers them. Uh, it could be something directly in that, like in that moment. They went to a new arena yeah. or whatever, and they're like, oh, this is freaking me out. Tuck the tail, start running around. Yeah. Yeah. What's protect good to butt. see? You know, protect your back end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's good to see them going into that O posture and getting that message going back and forth from the tip of the nose. You'll see movement here, then a little hit here, and then you'll so see something like here, and then head. a little bit yeah. like oh, this. No, I have yeah, and then it goes all the way through till finally the tail yeah. goes. Okay, and then you'll see them make do something because they've gone. Okay, all right, I'm going to do this just like us. If we're really saying, give me a minute, give me a minute, let me think about it. And we go really still and we kind of go through this whole process. Then we go, okay, this is what we're going to do about it. <laughs> right? So we just accent that with, yeah. with verbal speech. That's all. So someone asked if I can explain the carryover after a session. No, I can't explain it, but we see it all the time. Um, we see, I have had a, the first, one of the first horses I worked with had Lyme disease and she was twisting her head to trot and the woman wouldn't canter her and we did one session and the horse came straight and never looked back. Um, other horses need to see the pads more regularly to make a, a, a substantial change that's gonna stick, but the majority of horses, a couple of sessions. Now it doesn't mean you stop using pads because they're still benefiting from it, but the number of times people have come up to me and said, you know, my horse had to be tranquilized for the farrier and I use Surefoot after two sessions, no more tranquilizers. Mm -hmm. That's such a common story. So. The best guess that I have is that um, the horse comes with a set of patterns, you know, that he's born with genetically. And then he wanders around with his mom and follows his mom's patterns. And then we start to insult him. You know, poor shoeing, poor teeth, got kicked in the ribs, fell down, bad saddle fit, poor training, uh, locked in a stall, whatever. Yeah, so that just... happened to the horses. I don't, I can't do it. Sorry, uh, sorry. It's okay. And then like we reset them, you put them on pads and they reset their nervous system. And that's about the best we can describe it at this point. Yeah. I, I love the result. My, I have a horse who went blind in one eye and she's got limited vision in the, in the good eye. Hang on, let me and make it. We, we put her on the pads last week so that we'd have some neat footage to show you all today, which we're in the truck, so we don't have it. Um, and after she really used the pads too. And she, she's a very intelligent, thoughtful horse. And so very quickly she started saying, okay, double up these pads and put this pad here and do this pad. And then even like, get on it, come on, move those pads, which is really funny, I think. And so she used the pads for quite some time. She did a nice variety of pads. She stacked pads, which was really interesting. Um, but she, cause she would actually start putting them in her place to set herself and then pick up a foot and wait for us to fix it you know, to get the pad underneath. When she was done, I caught her in the field later that day doing this amazing extended trot, all by, just for herself, just for her own purposes. But when she's blind, I mean, she can really barely see anything. She's been very, you know, careful about where she puts herself and how she moves. So for her to be out there just going wham, 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 and just straight line, beautiful, back and forth. Uh, it was incredible to see that something shifted in her because she's gotten habituated now to using the one good eye and kind of arcing her body in a funny way. So I feel like for her, she was able to gain a little bit more um, freedom within her movement. Something in her shifted and she made, you know, neurological connections or whatever stuff happen. And that's the stuff that we're excited that you are going to have the data for at yeah. some point. 
<laughs> it's just, it's, um, you know, it's been such a journey uh, starting with this. Like I started with Surefoot in eight years ago and it, the first three horses made such differences that I have just been running around like a crazy person in the, in the beginning uh, testing this out. But, you know, horse after horse after horse. And now we have Surefoot all around the world, uh, Japan, um, South America, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and everybody's getting the same results. Um, now, not all horses are going to love Surefoot. Nothing is an all. Um, and you wouldn't want to do this with neurologic horses. If your horse has any neurologic issues, you want to talk to your vet and make sure that it's okay before you start this. Although there are veterinarians using Surefoot to treat neurologic problems, but it's under the care of a vet. Um, and since we're giving the horses a voice, and this is the most important thing, is that we're giving the horses a voice to say yes, no, which foot, which density, so that we're not forcing them into this. We're giving them options. Um, Heidi wanted to see that horse move after um, the little quarter horse I talked about, so I'm just... Mm. Just a FYI, Horse Speak, we originally named it Giving Horses a Voice, <laughs> and the publisher <laughs> changed the title. <laughs> So yes, who changed yes. It? <laughs> yes, who did Trafalgar? Trafalgar. Mm -hmm. They yeah. said it sounded like an advocacy title, rather than a horse language book. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is after the pads. I'm pretty sure. I just have to like, uh, yeah. It's, uh, <coughs> I just messed it up. Yeah, yes, that's a very different canter, and it's not perfect, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because then I had to start working with the rider and getting her more balanced. Um, mm -hmm. So. You know, in this situation, and this is a case where they're going to need to see pads quite frequently because the horse had very strong habits. But yeah, that's definitely afterward. And um, and there's improvement in one hour. There's big improvement. Mm -hmm. And to maintain that improvement with a horse like this, we still have to break down improving what the rider's doing, working on our training, right, mm -hmm. and working with the pads. So it's not just that this is going to fix everything, but it it acts as a magnifier for some issues that are going on that people don't notice. I just want to show this horse's feet. Um, I'm going to pause my screen share for a second and I'm going to go over and um, show you what the imprints look like of this horse before and after. There's so, this is what this is. is that a truck going past your car? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Here in Vermont, <laughs> this, is what the, trucks. this horse's <laughs> right front foot looked like before, and then this is what, I don't have the left front in this particular view, but this is what the right front foot looked like after. So wow. You can see, yeah, just how much change, wow. and that's in an hour. That's in one hour. Yeah. That's Which amazing. Sweet. Yeah. And as a side note, if folks are, have come to this webinar today from the horse speak side of things. Wendy is a fantastic riding instructor. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just That's FYI. If you all can uh, get a clinic and hook up with Wendy, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Oh, somebody's gonna video their Surefoot sessions. That'd be awesome because when you can video and then slow it down and actually see yeah. like, like I'm still seeing stuff. Let me just go back to screen share here. I'm still seeing stuff on, where I've looked at these videos a million times and then like just doing those kind of little um, back and forths give you, sorry, I don't want to hang on. I'll pause it so I don't make you nauseous while I scroll down to something um, a little bit easier to see. Yeah, we were really excited to share our videos with you all today. Um, I was working on a little bit of editing and then the power <laughs> went out. So next time we all get together, we'll show you our horses yeah. working with the pads. They really enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Where do we got? This one. What am I saying? He's sneaking his, his head, head out, out in play. play. So there's a person who wrote in and said, what is my horse saying when he's sneaking his head out in play? I would have to know playing towards a human being or playing towards another horse or playing towards a dog. Like I'd have to know what the context of playing is because snaking, in it, is it snaking or is it twirling? Because there's, there's one where they do this and it's a, sort of an irritated twirl. And they're snaking where it's out and it's there's a driving force to it. I'll share. Do you want me to make here? I'll make you bigger again so you can do that again so they can see you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so so there's a twirling that they do like this. It's like a ringing of their neck. And that's a irritation, frustration. 
um, they're having a hard time waiting for dinner, they might do this, right? Um, but if they're snaking, that's a downward driving thrust. It's a, it's a driving force. So it would have to, yeah, it's a stallion behavior. Twirl, twirl is not necessarily, I mean, stallions can do it, but any horse does it. I have two mares that do it. So, so twirling is more of an, an energy that they put into feeling frustrated. So snaking and twirling are, are two different things. So I'd have to see. They can't, hold on. There seems to be a little bit of a technical difficulty seeing. Yeah, you okay. Guys should be, um, you should be on spot. There. All right. So if, there, if there's, if the head, here's the head and here's the neck. So if there's this, this twirling thing, I'm doing very slow motion, but there's this, like they're looking like here comes dinner and they go twirl like that. That's like an Arab kind of a deal. It's huh? like an Arab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have, I have two Morgans who do it. And they go, Wah! bring the food here yeah. faster. You're oh, not yeah. coming fast <laughs> enough. Um, or if something moved, you know, something moved way out in the woods and maybe it was a bear, they might do this because that's like a worried irritation. So it can represent just like, oh, I'm so like, I'm so frustrated with the situation. It could be fear or it could be agitation, it could be different things. But if they drop the head down and the neck down this way and scoop forward from a low angle, that's a stallion motion, motion that they are driving there. They're saying, you guys got to go. If I get there, I got teeth and you guys got to go. And he does that to keep everybody together and herd them all together. If he's really needing to get his herd out of a, what he considers to be a, a dangerous situation. So typically in the, in the wild, they only use it to really get everyone going out because they don't want to waste uh, calories running too much in the wild. So it's only used for reserve situations. But in domestic horses where they might be frustrated or bored or there's not enough room for everybody, you, you can see that sometimes. And you might see it in a gelding who is kind of study. So I didn't read what that one was. All right, so um, let's see. We, I, we've had some questions and I've answered them. Uh, I've typed some answers there. Um, it's best to put it in the chat because I can't figure out hand raising yet, okay? <laughs> I, I, I've gotten that some things better, but not you all. Could, um, you could put them on audio if you decided to um, so they could actually talk during the thing if that's okay. what you wanted to do. Okay, I just okay. So, so Sharon, what do we want to do here? Shall I just play another a little? Here's another little video. This horse is on uh, medium pad share screen. It's more of a side view. I and mm -hmm. again, when I play these videos, I haven't really looked at them. I'm just randomly mm -hmm. my video collection. So, well, this is interesting. So like um, that beginning shot there. Here I'll go back. The horse is the ears backwards. That represents concentration. And then someone walking behind the horse. So they're in a bubble of personal space all the time. And this horse is concentrating, having a personal experience on the pads. And then just had to check it out and look. That's that whole jumping in the pool thing. Is it safe? Is this person coming up behind me wanting me to move? It? Are they well, going to bring me Well, that's also her mother who feeds her. The woman behind Okay, that's yes, what I was going to say. Is food coming? <laughs> you know, what, what's better? These pads or is there some food coming? Um, but it's interesting is when... The horse comes back to it. There go the ears again, which is not it's anger. Big time. It's it's focused concentration. It's like an inward focus. Like we do that when we're taking a test or doing a math problem. We get like this face. So there you start to see the movement, the blinking, the rocking. Wendy, you're always talking about them. Oh, the rocking and back rocking. and forth. Yeah, I gotta show a video of that. I'll find one. Mm. But you can see there's a lot of blinking and much head movements, but definitely. Right. And if, you know, I can see the, the information traveling down in, I, I'm pointing like you guys can see what I'm pointing at. I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at, at the, the shadow at the ridge of the shoulder where it meets the neck. Can everyone see that? You can see that, Wendy, right? Yeah, yep, I'm just answering somebody. Boots, okay. shoes, barefoot, it doesn't matter. Surefoot works with all those horses. Yeah. Um, people ask so, that all the time. That was an early on question and it doesn't matter. So here we are. The, at the end. Right. So the shadow right there is what I'm looking at because that is where the horse isn't really passing information further down oh, her you body. Mean the shadow in the shoulder, right? That, yeah. that right there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a rigidity to that spot that I bet will change 
So here As we time goes on. medium pads and we've switched to a diagonal and it doesn't matter if they rest the toe. And you can see you're swaying there actually. I'll right. Down. Yep. So she's looking, but she's, it's interesting. I think this horse had had laminitis and she was kind of uh, recovering from laminitis if I remember correctly. Okay. And you can see her shifting there. Yeah. Yep. So what I like is when she comes back around that time, she's using, it's great that you're so, showing it so slowly. There's a, there's a way that horses use the middle of their neck. I call it the mid-neck button. And they use it for this side-to-side this -side motion like this. And it needs to be really free and liberated for their shoulders to also be free and liberated. If you think that the buttons start with the nose, the first button is with the nose because that's where they greet the world. They greet each other. They check things out. And they move from there all sequentially all the way down. And I can say that because when we've had clinics with people standing there with their palm in the air, which is a gesture that says, I want to connect to you to your buttons. Um, and horses realize that that's what we're saying. We've had horses come to all kinds of people and put each button on the person's palm. The person's not moving. And the horse starts, and they come, they do this, and then they do this, and then they do, the person stays still. And the horse passes the buttons all the way through. So what's interesting is to, to see them using them in that way for themselves and then using them to connect with us in that way. And that last picture when she was being ridden, yeah. that, that area of between her neck and shoulder to me already looked different. Okay, let me just, let me just bring that back up again so that they can see that. Uh, <clears throat> to do. Uh, share screen. Sharon's just adjusting her neck right there. Yep. <laughs> Did everyone hear that neck crack? <laughs> this horse makes me want to crack my neck. Um, yeah, so I, she feels, she feels, she looks different in that area. I mean, part of it's just the design and shape of her shoulder, but there's a way that her, how do I say this? It just looks when softer, look, and there's more looks softer. In little part of the neck here, obviously yes. it's the other mm -hmm. side, but still you can see that there's more consistency in the bend as opposed to yes. just a rigid board. Right. Yeah. Yes, instead of being a rigid board, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> yes. The technical term. Yes. <laughs> All right. So let me stop that. Um, I'm gonna find the video of a horse that sways a lot. So while I'm looking, you can yak a little bit. Um, you can yak. You can yak. Yakety yak. <laughs> People were shooting out questions before. That was uh, hard. Yeah, I guess any kind of online analysis. Of what they're the, telling uh, us. Yeah, we do do. So someone said, do I do online analysis? So they were the, looking for the short foot pads, but we're doing actually an online herd dynamic uh, webinar that we're asking folks to send in their videos. And um, we're going to be doing that. Um, I think it's on the 13th of. Oh um may question from above that wasn't answered so yeah, penny wrote someone uh, i have a question from above that wasn't answered oh, there it is my horse often touches her left side behind her elbow on her chest i used to think she was just wanting to have a scratch but she does it repeatedly this one of your 13 buttons what does that mean that is i think of what you're what you're saying that is the backup button and they use that they'll go like this because it's hard to kind of reach um it is one of the 13 buttons and we can use that button to help them basically renegotiate their their experience so that's the backup button is full of nerves and when if you touch it like with your palm upward is best because there's a scooping motion as opposed to a driving motion right so this motion is invitational this motion is confrontational because you want them to round their neck you want them to to lift and up and round back into themselves I've got a video about that on, on our teachable page. It's called the therapy backup button. The enrichment with the therapy backup. Right. And there's a horse who goes through a whole process with it. It's pretty great. So when they touch it on themselves, they're also saying, I need to back up. I need to get into myself. Uh, if a horse touches it on another horse, they're saying, you need, to, you, you, need to get, you need to calm down. You need to get back into yourself. So it's a way for that button for themselves to also say, hey, I'm you know, coming out of whatever, you know, stress state or you call it slush. Heidi, I love that you use that term. Wendy, uh, Wendy sorry. <laughs> Who am I talking to? She's not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> <That's her. laughs> so, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Harry, you're an artist. 
Who are you? I don't know. <laughs> um, so you can send so, the videos for the we'll see um, her dynamics to we'll see way horsemanship at gmail.com. If it's a big file under about two gigs, you can use we transfer is the easiest way. We transfer.com. Use uh, we'll see way horsemanship at gmail and send it on over. So if we you are doing another plug. Can yeah. I plug again? Uh, yeah, we're going to do all that now. <laughs> <laughs> this coming Wednesday, uh, Sharon's come up with the uh, horse personalities. Well, it's Rolls in the Herd. Rolls in the Herd personalities webinar. And it's going to be um, also using some different energy types. So that's going to be on the 15th on this Wednesday at either 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or at 7 Eastern Standard Time. And you just go on to SharonWilson.com to uh, register for that. Yep. And there is a fee for that yeah. particular webinar. And then I have um, I have webinars all week. I have uh, Sherry Goodwin tomorrow, Bob Bowker, going to talk about hooves on Wednesday, Robin Hood again on Thursday. I do a Surefoot webinar. I'm going to just keep doing Surefoot webinars every Friday at 1 o'clock, talking about a lot of different things, different videos. Um, so you can find me at MurdochMethod.com. Uh, we're building Surefoot Equine. It's not quite ready yet. We're almost there. Um, and the YouTube channel, Murdoch Method and Surefoot Equine. But I'm gonna show you this last video. This is a horse that's been on pads many times. So this is not where you start, but this is uh, where this horse, he's a very high energy horse. Um, he's, uh, this is down in Costa Rica. Um, he was trained as a tope horse, which is like horse dancing, but sometimes mm. it's not a very um, nice uh, training system. And he loves Sherfoot <laughs> so much that you can stack him up and he, he won't get off unless I take his feet off the pads. And he wow. stays like crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I can let him stay there because he's used to it, but you would never start a horse like this because it would be way too much demand. Um, right. You start with one foot and one pad. Um, and, and this is, go ahead. And this is similar to what Dakota requested, my horse. She's, she's very self-possessed. She's very self-aware. And as soon as I combined one, one foot with two pads, she said, oh yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you can see by his face that he is totally, I'll play that again. He is totally grooving on this. And you can see that he sways. Yeah, right, yeah. Sway over and then he sways back and he just, it, he just it, stay there forever. You know, what's great is his facial expressions. Uh, and it's hard for us to see facial expressions all the time because the horse has such a long head but if you were to be down a down shot of his nose looking up we would our brains could compress the nose the mouth the lips the eyes the ears the the height of the head uh, and we would we would see a face but it's hard for us to see uh that kind of facial expression on horses only because their head is long but when you start to pull it all together they're making faces that are surprisingly similar to our own because they can do the feature with their lips. They can wiggle their lips. They get the chin involved. They get the jaw involved. They do the same kind of eye blinking we do. And the only thing we can't do the same is the ears, but the height of the head, the change of direction, some of the facial expressions between humans and horses are so remarkably similar that yeah. once you start to see it, it's really amazing. And we didn't talk about vagus nerve, uh, but you know, vagus is all about social interaction and we're constantly reading that social interaction and Vegas its biggest question is am I safe and that's one yep. of the things that Surefoot pads offer to horses is that feeling of safety and comfort and so it helps them it really creates a whole new dynamic between owner and horse because the horse starts recognizing that you've brought them comfort and they really appreciate it um, yeah yeah and that last week we ended on that where we were saying hey the <clears throat> one of the things that you can do in a horse speak, um, being able to do horse speak is to provide a safety object. So there's, there's a way to create a safe space for your horse using the same tactics they use for themselves. And because the surefoot pads create that for them, they automatically become a safety object. So, you know, it's, it, it's completing two things with one, one item, which is pretty cool. Yes, it is play of ponies it carries. That's right, Heidi. <laughs> and that's um, Heidi's horse, which you probably know. Um, and he is just a surefoot pad junkie and just absolutely loves it. 
Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. And remember, you can find me on Facebook at Murdoch Method and Surefoot Equine. My website is murdochmethod.com. And Sharon, you're going to tell us where we can find you. You can find us on uh, Sharon Wilsey <laughs> on Facebook, Horse Speak the Book on Facebook at SharonWilsey.com. And yeah, we have a Sharon Wilsey YouTube channel. So we're doing webinars, we're doing some stuff on YouTube as well. So, you know, everyone's in this uh, little bit of a smaller space these days, not necessarily a truck. Right now, but, we're all on know. top of the world. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're, you know, you're in outer space right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're great that's social distancing right there oh, yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll do more of these because now we have to see sharon's video and so yeah. we'll schedule another one in probably two weeks and thank you all for tuning in it's it's always a blast for me to get time to spend with sharon and laura it's fabulous yeah Ditto. likewise yeah thank it's you, great Wendy. thank you wendy take bye. care everyone bye you will <laughs>